We've all played rock, paper, scissors before. But after a while, it gets old. Everyone knows you should play rock one-third of the time, paper one-third of the time, and scissors one-third of the time. What I've always said is that rock, paper, scissors really needs nuclear weapons to be interesting. And so today, we will add a nuclear option to the game. Here's what that looks like. Nuclear weapons, being what they are, destroy everything. If you play nuclear weapons against rock, you win. If you play nuclear weapons against paper, you win. And if you play nuclear weapons against scissors, guess what? You win again. The only thing that can counter a nuclear weapon to some degree is another nuclear weapon. And in that case, you end up just drawing out the game. Of course, if we kept things like this, it would be a boring game indeed. Because nothing can truly defeat nuclear weapons, both players would constantly choose that option, and as a consequence, we would always have a draw. As such, to keep the game spicy, we are going to add a fifth strategy, the diffuser. Diffusers can cut the wires of nuclear weapons before they fire, and as a result, the diffuser beats nuclear weapons in this game. Other than that, diffuser is a weak strategy. Rock and scissors can both be used as a weapon against diffusers, and paper can bury diffusers in bureaucratic regulations to prevent the diffuser from doing anything useful. As a consequence, rock, paper, and scissors all win against a diffuser. Your puzzle for today is to figure out how to play this modified game of rock, paper, scissors. While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is that you need to mix among more than just two strategies, which is a topic I cover in Chapter 3 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. One thing that I'll add is that it is often difficult to eyeball what the correct solution is in modified rock, paper, scissors games. However, for this particular one, I was able to figure out the solution without directly doing any math. So if you're worried about having to slog through a bunch of different equations, for this one you might want to pause a little bit longer and try to see if you can figure it out without having to set anything up. Are you ready for the answer? At first thought, you might think that relying a lot on nuclear weapons and avoiding the diffuser is the right way to go. That's because nuclear weapons win against a lot of things and only lose against one thing, whereas diffuser loses to a lot of things and only wins against one thing. However, I think the key to reasoning out the solution is to not think about rock, paper, scissors as three separate strategies, but as just a singular rock, paper, scissors strategy, or at least just for the moment. If you do that, the remaining game is a form of rock, paper, scissors. The RPS strategy defeats diffuser, diffuser defeats nuclear weapons, and nuclear weapons defeat the RPS strategy. And because we all know that the solution to rock, paper, scissors is to play each strategy with an equal probability, it would seem to be the case that we should play RPS a third of the time, nuclear weapons a third of the time, and diffuser the remaining third of the time. Of course, the lingering question here is on the RPS strategy. In the actual game, it's three separate strategies, not just a single one. But using what we've talked about frequently already, to remain unexploitable within rock, paper, scissors, you should play rock a third of the time, paper a third of the time, and scissors a third of the time. So it stands to reason we should just distribute that probability all the way down. If we're supposed to play RPS a third of the time in this condensed game, then maybe what we should be doing is playing rock one ninth of the time, paper one ninth of the time, scissors one ninth of the time, and then nuclear weapons a third of the time, and diffuser a third of the time. That may run against our earlier intuition, 
but it seems a little more robust than playing nuclear weapons super frequently. If you did that, it would be easy for your opponent to exploit you by playing Diffuser. Similarly, if you refuse to play Diffuser very often, then it would be very easy for your opponent to exploit you by playing nuclear weapons often. This distribution seems a little more balanced, and thus it will be very difficult for your opponent to exploit you. But we still need to check our answer. If this set of mixing probabilities is indeed unexploitable, then no matter what our opponent plays, we should be breaking even in expectation. Is that the case with rock? Well, the one-ninth of the time you play rock, you in fact draw straight up. Then the ninth of the time you play paper cancels out with the ninth of the time that you play scissors. And similarly, the third of the time that you play nukes cancels out the third of the time that you play diffuser. You are breaking even in expectation under rock. What about paper? Well, the ninth of the time that you play paper, straight up draw. Rock and scissors cancel each other out. Nuclear weapons and diffuser cancel each other out. Similar story here. You're breaking even in expectation. What about if your opponent is playing scissors? Here, rock and paper cancel each other out. Scissors is an automatic draw. And meanwhile, nuclear weapons and diffuser are still canceling each other out. Still not exploitable. Things are a little bit different when your opponent is playing nuclear weapons. Here, the losses from rock, paper, and scissors are collectively canceled out with the victory from diffuser. And meanwhile, you also playing nuclear weapons leads to a natural draw. But in expectation once more, you are breaking even. Finally, we have diffuser. Here we have the victories combined from rock, paper, and scissors canceled out with the loss from nuclear weapons and you also playing a diffuser is a natural draw. But for the last time, in expectation, we have a break-even outcome. You have a strategy that no matter what your opponent plays, cannot be defeated in expectation. And thus, this is the solution to the game. One interesting aspect of this game is that the probability of a draw when you actually play is lower in the modified version with nuclear weapons than in traditional rock, paper, scissors. In traditional rock, paper, scissors, the probability of a draw is one in three, whereas here, because we have extra variance among rock, paper, and scissors with the nuclear weapons and diffuser also thrown in, the probability of a draw is actually only seven over 27. A little bit lower, not quite the same as the one third that we have from regular rock, paper, scissors. Did you figure out the solution? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.